Oh, he's eight. This guy is both those guys. I want to trade him a lot. Why? You trade away a good quarterback oh. to get a good player in a different position? I mean, I'm pretty stacked. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Oh. It's a great pleasure to be in the surrounding of highly responsible people. Uh, I was Im impressed how many homeworks came without reminding. <laughs> <coughs> Um, but based on counting, there will be a couple of printed pages. If I emailed you, do you need the printed copy? Oh, you want to give me no chance for first two to the point. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, I'm trying not to so, uh, so. In some sort, you have taught today's class material to yourself while doing homework. So I, uh, I will just summarize what, what you guys did here. So in uh, what's the goal of the class? Yes, and what uh, future of whom are, are we predicting right now? Ah. Yeah, yeah, I also uh, part of the, in the box. So, and what is the main conclusion of uh, that you come to at today's class and uh, what you came to by the end of your homework? There is not always an exact position, but it's a probability distribution. Yes, but it is always so <coughs> for, for, for electrons. But does this distribution stay at the same place or it ha something happened to it? Expectation value changes over time. Expectation value changes over time and distribution changes over, over time. But uh, is it always so or it is for some specific class of initial conditions? If an electron is in a bond? Yes. Well, let's assume that we, we know nothing except about But you can prepare initial conditions, different initial conditions. Will this conclusion sustain for any initial condition or only for specific? Where did we start from? Uh, I would say it would change for the initial condition. Yes, that's absolutely correct. But what was what was the initial condition for for the problem that you had? But it was in between the ground state and the first excited state? It's absolutely correct. Did you, did you hear it? So it was neither in uh, ground nor in excited. It was in superposition with some percentage here and there. So such states do give uh, dynamics, do give something, uh, some changes in time. If it would be only in ground or only in excited, it would be super boring homework. The distribution will not change in time. And the expectation value also will stay constant. Okay, so it is the main message and conclusion, and we will go through uh, details. Details of the policy. So we are at number nineteen. Uh, there is a chance to go up to about, well, 50, I don't believe, but 45 maybe, based on the amount of uh, days in the, in the year in, in the past. Uh, so you are done. I will double check, but it looks like everyone completed this. And this is for the next Friday. So we didn't start it to uh, go over, over the material. We just uh, look forward and maybe I will share something. So in the course, we do have, ah, previous drawing was better. You have access of methods, access of systems, and uh, access of external perturbation. No external perturbation right now. Only two systems, free space and particle in the box. And for free space, we uh, did practice Schrodinger equation, Schrodinger equation, time dependent, time independent, and Heisenberg equation of motion. For uh, particle in the box, we are completing time independent. We, we hold it done. 
become independent. And now it is uh, actually your homework was on solving time dependent training equation for particle in the box. And main message that uh, we already discussed right now is that for time dependence, it is critically important to know initial condition. Right? Because uh, the conclusions, the uh, trends, what we will observe for the same system will depend on initial condition, which is not a, not a big surprise if you play a billiard and suppose that we, we do not consider them uh, anyone winning any any ball coming to corner. They're just moving and reflecting. So the trajectories will strongly depend on who and where we'll kick. But the balls are the same, the box is the same, right? Yeah, this is time uh, independent energy with different wave vector inversely proportional to uh, size of the box. And energy, uh, wave function and energy. So, uh, denominator with size of, the, size of the box and in the denominator number index of the energy squared, right? Um, later on in the course, or if you will be exposed to any quantum problems in uh, other circumstances, you'll see that for um, different quantum systems, one can also label solutions with the index. But um, typically, so n square is growing function. So it's make uh, state becomes sparser and sparser. But for most of quantum systems, it will be denser and denser. So this uh, dependence will be not power, but something like one over n square if you were exposed to hydrogen atom. Just look to the future. So, suppose, I don't know, is it right or wrong? Suppose that you hate math. Suppose that you hate any equations. But by uh, there is a necessity to deal with um, physical chemistry quantum theory and particle in the world, or maybe some, some other quantum systems. You already know, we, we do not need to be mathematically educated to accept an idea that an equation has many solutions. We do not need to be mathematically educated to uh, accept that there, there is a set of functions and there is a set of eigenenergies, right? It's simple. But uh, if I do not have energy to write equations or memorize them, but I need to get general intuitive vision of the solution, how would you, what would you do? Probably hand waving, but there is a box and the probability comes up and down, and down. <coughs> That's it, right? And uh, if it comes up and down, more often the energy is higher, right? So um, does it sound intuitive? You, you can you can speak this language without any uh, equation. So it is pretty standard uh, <coughs> representation and figure that uh, people are using in the textbooks. So you know that one is not expected to add together apples and oranges. But uh, many authors of uh, quantum theory books do. Because they add together energy and probability. Uh, if you are rigorous, you would probably dislike it. But for visual representation, you put x-axis as your position in the box. And on the y-axis, you put simultaneously the shape of your wave function and offset of the energy. Because if you plot them all together, I'm just going to go a couple of slides back. If you draw more than two or three lines, they will be cloaked. They will block each other and you will be not uh, able to follow what they are on one hand. And on another hand, if you combine uh, both spatial distribution and energy in one figure, 
you kind of get intuitive picture that you can memorize visually and intuitively interpret some situations without, without writing equations and guess answers immediately. So develop some, some, some expectations, which is really important. So uh, if uh, we are not going to become professional theorists or computational chemists, uh, you may forget equations, but intuitive development of, of intuition for, for expecting how systems will behave is uh, a take home message that probably will stay with you a little longer. And same for, for the probability, if you have this stuff squared, you just offset the figures from uh, zero, from, from the origin by the size of the energy. Were zeros will convert into zeros, where there were either maximum or minimum will be always maximum because it is square. Now, <coughs> how do you create a superposition? What do you do to have this half excited, half not excited? Any, any ideas? Who was speaking about Schrodinger cat? Okay. So this this is the same same situation. It's like half dead, half, half alive. So how it is uh, how it is prepared? <coughs> Any ideas how, how we can prepare it in, in the lab? Well, um, th this is a really challenging question, and uh, um, it's many people do not have the answer. But I know one of the answers, which may be not general. Um, if you know that uh, sending one quantum of light will promote the system from ground to excited, right? Then we can think back that light is uh, constellations of electromagnetic field, and we let them oscillate for a specific duration. So if, if electric field induces transition, it oscillates, oscillates, and it induces transition. Not instantaneously, but slowly. And we, if you suddenly stop this, Inducing electromagnetic excitation, it may not be ready to go up to the from ground to excited. So it's irradiation by resonance electromagnetic uh, field by short of time, twice as short a time compared to what is needed for full excitation. So um, <coughs> did anyone turn the knobs by or operated through keyboard uh, with uh, NMR? Device? Was it in your lab? So uh, in the uh, NMR, they also have ground and excited states, but they are of very small energy offset. And there, the radio frequency performs this excitation. So uh, functioning of NMR device is based on creating such a position. So suppose we like, have 50 50, and then we look on what will happen with the wave function. Sometimes one utilizes uh, so called <coughs> Dirac notations, and if you didn't cover them, we will cover them later in more detail. But um, there is a, as we go through the course, you will, uh, you will see more and more, and you, you were already exposed that there is a Symmetries. There is a connection between functions and vectors, conjugated functions and uh, this um, row vectors and column vectors, right? And if we want to be super abstract, non-specific about whether it is vector or function, just quantum state, then we need 
then people do this uh, angular angular effect. So we have our ground and excited. We have uh, we superimpose them with one of the square root of two, and someone who, uh, who helped with uh, designing this. It was one from the class, or maybe if no one wants to take uh, glory for for this, it, it was collective effort. So if you do want probability to be 50-50, and you know that uh, probability is getting by uh, taking wave function or expansion coefficient squared, then uh, if you have square root of uh, two, one over square root of two, when it is squared, it gets one half. 80%. Therefore, this square root of 2 is here and there. Any questions or objections? <coughs> just, just to clarify, the, the weird like line and then bracket just means a superposition, right? Up around like a no, 1 and no, 2. No, 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 no. We just replace good normalized wave function by uh, by the uh, by this notation. Okay. If I do not want to write this phi, if I have forgotten the root alphabet. <laughs> or if I know I knew it. Uh, okay. So please do not hesitate to, to stop. Because I, I can Close eyes, forget, forget about you, and just enjoy the material that you probably do not want to. So, yeah, see, I'm closing the eyes. How do we predict future? By words, without equations. What is the main uh, idea in, in, in the protocol to predict future? I'm inviting you to do the standard practice main, well, for some people it is a main skill in this course. I don't think so, but it is one, one of the to translate mathematical language into human words and translate human words into mathematical language. So how do we predict future by human language? I already noticed that this question freezes the whole class. <laughs> No ideas? Okay. You get an initial condition and mm -hmm. then propagate the wave function through time? Yes, exactly. And <coughs> what is the mechanic of this propagation of wave functions through time? Time, and time dependent Schrodinger equation? Yes, and we already know how to solve it. So our way to predict future is, in some way, it is uh, explanation how to solve time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, um, Please participate in this discussion or just, just listen because this will come up again and again. So each eigenstate, each eigenfunction, propagate in time by accumulating phase according to its energy. Make sense? So if, if you had a wave function in the past, eigenfunction, not any, but eigenstate. And in the future, they will be different by e to the power uh, this energy of the state in the power of exponential with the, with the rest garbage like imaginary unit time divided by h bar so propagation from past to the future by exponential this energy of this state but each state if there is no degeneracy each state has its own energy so each state will accumulate different phase as we go from past to the future so it's one thing and another thing is that um, our true initial condition, our true state where we start from, is combined of eigenstates at different proportions. So two things. Take into account different proportions, which we call expansion coefficients. And second thing, each eigenfunction accumulates different phase. 
or accumulate phase at different phase. Phase, phase. Phase, phase. So those are our eigenfunctions. Those one over square root of two were <coughs> uh, initial conditions. We just decided that it will be halfway between ground and excited. And those are actual phase accumulation. So for the state one, it is I something energy of state one. For state two, it is I e to the uh, something energy two. Okay. So maybe it, it takes time to like digest and, and get comfortable, but we will come to this again and again. And to predict the future, we need to take into account that each eigenstate accumulates phase with different phase. Okay. Now, if you were thinking intensely, you can just lean back and relax a little bit. I'll, I'll give you a sign when to wake up and concentrate again. Well, who needs all these solutions? Um, well, it is a philosophical question. Some of you may decide that no one needs it, so that it's only an exercise for torturing the <coughs> minds. But if you, this is a model, that uh, a protocol model that uh, we in class or later in the big life we will repeat for predicting observables, predicting properties. Or characterizing the true model. So wave function itself is, is not an observable, you do not measure it typically. Some crazy people try to, but it's not standard uh, experiment. An example of simple observable is the uh, position, expectation value of position. So we find wave function as it develops in time only with the purpose to find some observable. Or if we are not ready for observable and we, ju uh, we just want to get intuitive vision of what is going on in the system, we may uh, think on probability distribution, which is wave function squared. So the wave function itself is, is not very much useful. It is only an intermediate step to get an observable. And if you want to, get, uh, to entertain ourselves with the understanding of the system, uh, probability distribution. So what do we do with wave function if we do need probability distribution? I don't believe that you have no idea. You probably just uh, say like, you're getting so. <laughs> Go ahead and entertain us. You just sit and listen. <laughs> so, well, uh, but uh, give me a sign if you do not know how to convert wave function into probability distribution. I was right. Everyone knows. Do you just multiply it by um, the count you get? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, if you if you know wave function, and basically it is our future. You already know. Right? But uh, it is not useful. We need to wrap it up in, in a better better shape, better form. And one of the shapes that has a little bit of use is multiplied by its conjugate. Right? So there are two terms. We function, we find function conjugate. Each term has each factor has two terms, right? Because we uh, skipped second, third, excited, we be dealing with only with ground waves, otherwise you have do more. And if you multiply two factors with uh, two terms in each, what will be the total number of uh, terms in the result? Four. Yes. I've got the interaction and engagement of class into the discussion. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Alex. <laughs> so the terms, uh, and you see, in this uh, future, in this prediction of the future, there, um, 
I'm going to scroll back and give one little technical announcement that we will appreciate later. So, in fact, the factor in front of eigenstate is expansion co initial in expansion coefficients times phase accumulation, right? But we can combine them together and tell that right now we still have an expansion coefficient, but it already includes time dependence. So we have time dependent expansion coefficients. And then it will be just much easier um, to process things. Many times there are no mathematical challenges and there is only calligraphical challenge that you have to repeat similar terms again and again and follow them. And if you simplify, it's, it's better. So this C1 and C2 includes initial, this one was called of 2, each of them multiplied by phase accumulation. Whew, good. Now, for probability distribution, you will need to multiply two factors, two terms in each. And upon opening the brackets, we will have four terms. One term will include uh, eigenstates, and uh, one factor in each term will include eigenstates, and another factor will include time dependence. Right? So just careful of opening the brackets. And the eigenstates will be coming in pairs, and they can either coincide or not coincide. Like first and first, second and second, or <coughs> second, second and first. Right? That's very challenging. Same uh, pattern for uh, the standard dependent coefficients. First and first, where one is conjugated, second and second, and then this uh, cross terms. For second, second, third. Good. And we do know that the this time dependence is nothing but exponential imaginary exponential of these energies. And we know that when we put star, it means we flip a sign. <coughs> okay. Do not wake up. Still relax. I, I'll give a sign. But it will be really important. So if I'm looking on the first term and only the factor that explains time dependence, I just look and say what I imply under this notation. So for one for, for uh, one of these uh, C coefficients, it can be e to the power of minus i energy and for another infinity plus. And if you multiply two phase accumulation factors that develop in the with the same pace but in opposite direction, what would they be? Yes. So when the numbers are equivalent first and first, there will be no time dependence. Keep sleeping, keep sleeping. I'll give you a sign when I, I will summarize. We shouldn't uh, spend too much mental efforts. <clears throat> so, if the <coughs> indices at the bottom of these coefficients coincide, if it is the same energy, n equals either 1 or 2, both cases then it will be developing accumulating phase in one direction and then same phase but in opposite direction. And these two exponentials will cancel each other. Right? Because e to the power x, e to the power minus x will be one. Convincing. What if the indices will not coincide? So what will happen if uh, indices do not coincide? Too bad, things do not cancel and we will still have the uh, some sort of phase accumulation. It will be all this 
uh, constants time and then energy difference between the participating eigenstates. So when we convert our prediction of future into observables, we will have uh, time accumulation in two forms, either no time dependence, just canceled, or accumulation of phase according to difference of energies. Not too important. I'll give sign when, when you will be ruled. Yes? Question. Question. Does it matter which, which one of the um, coefficients come <coughs> or not? First, which first, which is second? Yes, if you uh, accumulate phase uh, positive or negative. Okay. Therefore, we have uh, this cross terms come twice. One, two, two, one. And star is in front of two and in front of, of uh, one. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to travel through the slides to, to the very first slide, show something there, and then return back. So close your eyes when I will be traveling because it will be boring <coughs> to see all the So here is the whole work and the code that you did practice. Look at the first line right after declaration of site. So it has this RR, one half R11, one half R22, and then R12 times cosine. There is no imaginary things, only the real part. I'm not expanding it because you, you already know what it is. You play with this code. So for time dependence, you have a sign, a real function. So this answer to Alex's question, Alex asked, does it matter? in which direction phase accumulation develops. There are terms, two terms. In one phase accumulates forward, and another backwards. But when we add them together, our old body Euler helps us. Two exponentials developing in opposite direction after summation give cosine. Okay? So in, in some sort, today's lecture is the background for the homework that you have already completed. And I'm trying to, to bring this. Now close eyes and wait until I find the right side where we stop. Somewhere here. Yes. <coughs> So probability distribution. <gasps> there should be a star here. Remove one star here. Wave function V star, without star, and then this uh, four terms. Wave functions, time dependence. Wave function, time dependence. Product of wave function, time dependence. Um, maybe if you have relaxed a little bit, it's time to slowly wake up. And do not hesitate to stop me, because it, there is no reason to go forward if uh, you don't follow. So if we are looking on probability distribution composed as product of the predicted future of the wave function, then there will be four terms, each term consisting of two types of factors. One factor is product of two wave functions. Another factor, time, is product of two time-dependent expansion coefficients. And we, those who were following, the time dependent coefficients are trivial if indices of, uh, of this wave functions coincide, <coughs> this so called diagonal indices, and there will be phase accumulation if they, are, if they do not coincide. The uh, products of functions will be just eigenfunctions that you have already found, like signs with uh, specific wave factor. If it is one and one, it, it will be just sine of the same sine squared. 
I mentioned so. Um, the following statement has no science in it. It is only a notation to save time and calligraphic, uh, reduce calligraphic challenge. If you do have product all three time dependent uh, expansion coefficients, it is too many symbols to write. C, one, bracket, T, bracket, C, one, star, one, bracket, T, bracket, about a dozen symbols, right? We can write twice as less symbols. Just uh, call it symbol row and put these two indices, row and one. <coughs> Just redefining, re giving new notation to save calligraphic effort. So this and um, these factors you accumulate everything about phase accumulation, and it is critically important for predicting fusion. Okay. Now let's uh, put together all all things. <coughs> Just open uh, what what they mean. So. Product of first wave function, product of second and first person second, second and seconds. And this product of, of wave functions, we, we will call them rho. This is a Greek letter, rho. Same as uh, Latin R. You have seen it uh, probably in the density, in Archimedes. So rho 1, 1, rho 1, 2, rho 3, rho 3. If indices do coincide, we have exponentials developing with uh, appropriate energies in opposite direction. Plus and minus cancel, give no time dependence. Row to two, accumulation of phase forward and backward cancels, gives no time dependence. But if it is uh, off diagonal terms, by the way, see it looks like a matrix with two indices. You can probably put it just two by two matrix. So those will be diagonal, those will be off diagonal. So if these off diagonal terms uh, uh, are processed by this energy difference, you will see that there will be time dependence, but it will accumulate in opposite direction. Right? So energy difference defines accumulation of phase in this uh, elements of uh, density matrix. And now we come back to your uh, gloriously completed homework. So remember uh, this um, notations R11, R22, R12. Those were these uh, products of off wave functions, right? So if it is index is the same, it was just a probability distribution for ground state, right? The function multiplied itself gives probability distribution. This for ground. Match the color. Ground. Then uh, the red is two humps. It was <coughs> excited, right? So if you have wave function times uh, itself, it will be just sine squared. Nothing negative. Uh, camel with two humps. And if you multiply this off diagonal uh, non coinciding wave functions, uh, the ground state is always positive, but the uh, first excited goes positive and negative. Therefore, product has some negative part. But since there is no imaginary part for the ground state, the uh, two off-diagonal terms, one, two, and two, one, will coincide. The yellow and, and, and uh, purple here. Okay? So these space, spatial distributions this uh, four functions 
will be added together with different expansion coefficients, where expansion coefficients do depend on time, or may, may or may not depend on time. So therefore, in your coding homeworks, they just uh, brought up to show what is going on. Okay, and if you add them together with, uh, probably I should write something. Um, if you add together rho 1, 2 plus rho 1, 2 times uh, this sine 2x sine x plus rho 2, 1 sine x sine 2x, I'm just keeping the, the, the constants row 1, 2, and row 2, 1, uh, we can put the spatial part out of the brackets. And uh, row 1, 2 plus row 2, 1 will be added together. Sine 1x, sine 2x. And uh, if you plug in that those are accumulation of, of phase in the opposite, and e two minus P1 times T plus plus E to the power minus I over H bar E2 minus P1 T. So this summation together will result in uh, two times a sign E2 minus P1 <coughs> H bar multiplied by T. So this shows the explains why we didn't have any uh, imaginary accumulation of time in the pole. So it was uh, the diagonal terms on uh, sine, sine x squared and sine two x squared were just contributing at each instant of time without any time dependence. And the cross term was coming with uh, factor equals to cosine. And when we added together these uh, <coughs> terms, If we add together all these terms, then you see the same uh, thing uh, which you observed uh, while doing homework. So uh, two functions of ground and excited are either added together or subtracted with this off diagonal terms, which oscillate. Right? And now you see the mechanics of this time dependence. So we just add together products of with functions weighted by different uh, time-dependent coefficients. But as a result, you do have an interpretation that your particle in the box bounces forth and back between walls. Make sense? I think I'm done. <laughs> so, end of the meeting. Uh, please uh, approach and ask any questions, but I'm looking forward to see you on Monday and have a nice weekend. Yes, favorite spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Eagles Vikings are here. I don't know. I'll break. I'll uh, be able to watch the show. Yeah, it's a little party at my house. Parents are? Yeah. 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 So the time that the one comes from the cosine. Yes. Okay. Yes.
So an Euler's formula gives us that? Yes, this, this is Euler. So in fact, we are getting this product of sine and cosine times adding together this uh, oh, time dependent, and they they are coming uh, as a summation. Yep, I see. I see why Euler and gets us that now. It was really why um, well, this become Euler because I thought this was multiplying for all like lower is going through. So no, no, if you, no, if you no, multiply that's... it, I'm like, shouldn't it just equal like one? Um, that's why I was getting super confused. No. But I, I see that you are be adding them and then you use the trigonometric this, function. Is this still sine? Yes. In, yes. Okay. So it is multiplied by that. Yeah. And then that's the oil. Okay. <laughs> so guys, please, please stop me because uh, I hope you can speak the same language, but it's something that for me seem uh, very simple, maybe hard for you. Some things that I consider like complicated. Maybe like snap for you because young brains work quicker. So mm -hmm. I'm spending many time on primitive math, which you may already know, and skip major concepts. So you're doing a good job of stopping. Keep keep doing so. Because I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm like I, I like to see all the calculations like almost drawn out because yeah. then I can actually see where you're going with it. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes I can get where you're going if you skip a couple of things but or an uh, explanation of what a multiply like what does this mean so if we were to take that cosine out the the cosine function out it would just look like the um original sine function that you have in the with the dotted lines yes, yes. and it would not change if time was to change yes yes uh See you, Bill. So we add together this uh, three functions: uh -huh. the blue and red are coming with the same with the factor one. They don't change in time. But uh, this uh, dashes they will come with uh, cosine factor. So it will be become from positive to negative. It will be changing up and down. Therefore, it will shift the average distribution. So right now, it will cancel this red stuff and enhance red stuff there. So it will be moved there. But if we travel by half period, it will increase this one and, and depreciate this one. Oh, so, OK. And you said that they were multiplied? When you get the, the, the bouncing function, or is that addition? Right. This one. Is multiplied by cosine of delta e times t, and those are uh, half constant. Okay. And so to get the bouncing function, that you you're adding all of, all of these um, probabilities together. Yes. Okay. Add these three functions with uh, red and blue uh, come just as they are, mm -hmm. and the dashed one comes with oscillating factor. Okay. That makes sense. That's Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.